Example five is uh, about uh, consolidated drained triaxial test or CD triaxial test uh, on a normally consolidated clay specimen. You are given uh, the confining pressure, uh, which is sigma three, one forty kilonewton per meter square, and also the deviator stress we call delta sigma d f at failure, which is one hundred four. Uh, kilonewton per meter square, and uh, you are asked to determine friction angle phi prime, and this is a effective stress friction angle or drained friction angle phi prime, and then the angle theta of the failure plane, and also normal stress and shear stress on the failure plane, and finally effective normal stress on the plane of maximum shear stress. And on the right hand side, this figure here, this is a more circle of the specimen at failure. So this is more circle. And we have the effective stress failure envelope given to us as well. We know this failure envelope is tangent to the more circle at failure. And that tangential point, that's the failure, represents the stress on the failure plane, the top point B here. And for normally consolidated clay, we know the effective cohesion C prime is zero. So that failure envelope can be represented using this uh, uh, function tau f equals to sigma prime tangent of phi prime. And for consolidated drain the triaxial test, we know the effective stress sigma prime equals to the total stress sigma. So for confining stress, sigma three prime, it equals to the total confining pressure. In this case, it's 140 kPa or kilonewton per meter square. And then the major principal stress, which is also the axial stress, sigma one prime is sigma three plus deviator stress at failure, which is delta sigma d at failure. And this is 140 plus 104, and we get 244 kilonewton per meter square. So that's the major and minor principal stresses at failure. And then for friction angle phi prime, so phi prime is basically uh, uh, the slope, um, the angle of this failure envelope. And to get this uh, phi prime, we derived this uh, expression in the previous lecture. So sine phi prime, if you just look at uh, this angle O, B, and A, and phi prime is this angle here, and this failure envelope passes the origin because C prime is zero, so intercept with uh, Y axis is zero. So this uh, sine phi prime is simply B A over O A because you have, this is a tangential point B here, so you have 90 degree angle there. So sine phi prime is AB over OA, and AB is the radius of Mohr circle, so that's how you get this one over two, sigma one prime minus sigma three prime, and then OA is the center of the Mohr circle, which is one over two, sigma one prime plus sigma three prime. So if you plug in the values of these two, uh, principal stresses, so you have 1 over 2 times 244 minus 140, and then 1 over 2, 244 plus 140. So the sine phi prime is 0 0.2708. And then the angle of this phi prime is just arc sine phi, and this yields 15. Point 71 degree. So that's the friction angle phi prime. And then for the failure plane angle theta, again, this is something we derived in the previous lecture. For a triaxial test, the failure plane theta uh, angle theta is 45 plus phi prime over 2. And if you plug in the phi prime value we just obtained from part A, 15.71 divided by 2. So this gives you theta of 52.86 degree. So that's the uh, failure plane angle theta. 
and then for normal and shear stress on the failure plane. So we know the angle of the failure plane theta is 52.86 degree. And then using equations uh, 10.8 and 10.9, we can calculate the normal and the shear stress on this plane. So for normal stress, the expression is given here. And plug in theta of 52.86. And then you have sigma 1 prime sigma 3 prime from uh, this Traxler test. You substitute those numbers, you get sigma prime value of 177.92 kilonewton per meter square. And for tau f, there are two ways to get tau f. First one is to use that equation 10.9. So tau f is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 prime over 2 times sine 2 theta. And if you plug in numbers, so this is 50.06 kilonewton per meter square. Or the second way to get tau f is because you know this is a shear stress at failure. So it, this point is also on the failure envelope. So you can use the more coolant failure envelope function, which for this NC clay is sigma prime times tangent of uh, phi prime. So if you plug in sigma prime, you get from equation 10.8. And then for effective friction angle, we solve this in part A, which is 15.71 degree. If you plug in these two numbers, you'll get the same tau f, 50.06 kilonewton per meter square. So that's the uh, shear stress on the failure plane. And finally, for part B, or uh, part D, you're asked to get the effective normal stress on the plane of maximum shear. So for this uh, soil element at the failure, uh, we know that this Mohr circle represents the stress state along in different planes of orientation uh, for this soil element. So the maximum shear stress is actually represented by this point at the top of the Mohr circle. So this one, we call this point, let's say, call this point D. So this point T is D is top of the Mohr circle. And this corresponds to the maximum shear stress because it has the largest Y value. So this is tau max. So for this tau max, the normal stress is the horizontal axis. So it's for this Mohr circle, it's basically the center of the Mohr circle. So then for this problem here, this maximum shear stress, uh, the for this plane of maximum shear stress, the normal stress is basically uh, the center of the Mohr circle, which is one over two sigma one prime plus sigma three prime. And if you plug in these two major principal stresses, uh, major and minor principal stresses, you get 192 kilonewton per meter square. So now let's use the Mohr Coulomb's failure criterion and calculate the shear strength on this plane. So by definition, shear strength is the maximum shear stress the material can sustain before it fails. Based on more coolant failure criterion, the shear strength tau f is a function of the normal stress on this plane and shear strength parameter phi prime. For this material, c prime is zero. So tau f equals to sigma prime times tangent phi prime. From Part A of this problem, we solved for the effective friction angle phi prime. So this is from part A, uh, it's 15.71. So if you plug in this value and then use the normal stress on this plane, 192 times tangent of 15.71. So the shear strength on this plane is actually 54 kilonewton per meter square. So now if you compare the shear stress tau max on this plane, which is 52, and the shear strength on this plane, which is the maximum shear stress material can sustain before it fails, 
we'll see that the shear stress on this plane actually is smaller than its shear strength. So that's why soil specimen will not fail along this plane. So soil specimen will not fail because your shear stress on this plane has not reached the maximum value, has not reached the shear strength yet. So that's why soil does not fail on this plane of maximum shear stress.